Hey everyone, I'm Arya, and when it comes to hair dynamics, the most common things I'm asked to help with are how to get proper collisions with other objects, and how to stop the hair from exploding. So I decided to create a basic hair dynamics tutorial to show you how to get a good hair simulation without having to get too advanced. Make sure to like and subscribe, and if you're able to support me with a donation, then head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. So the first thing you need to do is open up a new scene in Blender. You can clear the default objects and then we just need to add a character. I'm going to link my character in the description, which will include the animation as well. And I suggest using this one for the tutorial just so that you're able to get the same results as I am. If you do want to have your own character, you can always go to Mixama.com and sign up for a free account. Then back into Blender. You can head up to the left, go to File, Import. If you're using the one that I'm linking, make sure to select FPX. Then just find the file on your computer, select it, and click Import. Next, we can select our character, and now we can start adding our particle system. So there are a couple ways to do this. You could just go into Edit Mode and create a vertex group by selecting certain vertices, then heading down to the Object Data Properties, Click here to add a new vertex and assign. My preference is to create a duplicate geometry of the scalp just so that you get a little bit more control when it comes to things like collisions. So just select the vertice right in the center of the back of the head. Then once you have that, you can hold control and hit plus about 9 or 10 times just until this goes pretty close to the ear here. This is a little bit too far forward on the forehead so I'm going to hold shift, alt, then you can just select each of these edges here to bring this back. And I'm going to do that about four times. Now that we've got these vertices selected, what we can do is duplicate this. So let's hold Shift, D, just hit Escape. Then when we still have these selected, we need to separate them from the rest of our geometry. So hit P. And in this case, since we do have some other geometries like the shorts and the shirt, we don't want to use this option, so we're going to use Selection. Then as soon as we do that, you'll see that we get a duplicate here and it kind of pops out. So as soon as we hit tab to go back into object mode, you'll see now that we have two separate geometries, one for the body and one for the scalp. Then we can just quickly rename this by heading up to the collections, selecting our second geometry and just naming this scalp. And since we duplicated this, you can see it's still attached to our armature. So if we hit play, this will move perfectly with the rest of our geometry. So with the scalp selected, let's head over to the right and select the particle properties. Then click this plus button to add a new system. This is going to give us an emitter by default, but in this case we want to use hair particles. So let's select here. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see that the hair is incredibly long. So what we can do is just head over to our hair length and type in something like 0.75. Let's leave the number to 1000 for now. You can see it looks a little bit sparse, but we can cover that up later with other particles. I find that using less particles here and adding them later on is better since these are the particles that are actually going to get calculated by our simulation. And if you have too many particles, you can slow the simulation down as well. You can have issues with your collisions. Next is the segments and I'm just going to quickly turn on hair dynamics just so I can show you what this does. Don't do this, but if I hit play, you'll see that the hairs are going to fall, but right away you'll see that there's these sections here, and the amount of sections that we have here correlate with these over here. So if I was to change this to something like 30, head back to frame 1 and hit play. Of course, you'll see this is a little bit slower, but our hairs are going to be able to do a lot more because there's more sections to bend on. Of course, this looks awful at the moment just because we don't have any collisions. So let's head back to frame 1. And since I'm using longer hair, I'm going to leave this at 30, but feel free to take this down a little bit to say 20 or 25 if you do have a slower system. As well, you can also bring this number down too to say something like 500. So you saw that we needed to add collisions, but the one thing that I want to do before we get there is to groom our particles. But just keep in mind that as soon as you start grooming your hair, you will lose the ability to change some of the aspects of your simulation. So you kind of need to get your base value set before you do that, otherwise you just need to reset your edit and do it again. And the way we do that is just head up to the left here, select this, and let's click on Particle Edit. 
you'll see right away that we have this circle here and like any other brush in Blender, we can click F and drag our mouse to scale this up and down. As well, you can just change the radius and the strength at the top as well. By default, you should have the comb selected and if I was to just click and drag, you can see that it just starts bringing our particles in the direction that we comb. Then just keep in mind that since we haven't put on the x-ray toggle yet, if I was to spin around, you'll see that we've got all of our particles on this side too. So typically, I end up turning on the x-ray toggle when I'm grooming the hair. So you can just click and drag until you've got this in roughly the place that you want it. Just keep in mind that places around the neck here, you want to keep a little bit of space. Just because once we add more particles later on, it's going to increase the volume of this. I'm just going to turn off the x-ray toggle for a minute and as well you'll see that some of our hairs are sort of going into our ears so I'm just going to click and drag just to bring those up a little bit on both sides. And you'll probably notice that it kind of looks like our particles have disappeared here but you'll see that if I turn on the x-ray toggle they're sort of just sitting underneath and you could just lift these up a bit but don't worry about that too much because once we're done grooming the particles we're going to give it some more subdivisions which will give this more of a curve to the hair. I'm not going to go too much into depth with these brushes but the next one is smooth and this is pretty self-explanatory. If you just drag over the hair it's just going to straighten out all the areas that have more of a kink in them. The next brush is the add brush and this is probably for more advanced hair simulations where you would be placing hairs individually and separating it into different parts. But this one is pretty simple, all you would do is select it and just click on the scalp and you'll see that it adds a hair particle. You'll notice at the top that I have my count set to 1 and my steps set to 10 so you can change these as well. And I think the default count is something around 10, so if you click this and click here, you'll probably get about 10 hairs. The next brush here is the lengthening brush, and that's pretty self-explanatory as well. You just click and drag, and you'll see that our hair grows. As well, you can change the strength and radius. If you want, you can also shrink the hair by selecting this and doing the same thing. The next one is the puff brush and I don't use this that often and if you are going to use this just bring the strength a little bit down as well. You can try using the puff volume and what this will do is when you're puffing the roots up a little bit it'll also help puff these up so that it kind of maintains the original shape that you had. Next is the cut brush and this is pretty straightforward as well. You just select this brush and you can just click and drag. Awesome, so that's good enough for now. We can just leave this and head back into object mode up on the left here. And now our next step is to just make this hair look a little bit smoother. So let's head over to the particle properties. And we can head all the way down and the first thing you want to do is click B spline. Let's also set the render steps to either 5 or 6. And we're still not seeing any change in the viewport so the final thing we need to do is just head to the viewport display and change that to 5 or 6 as well. Then right away you'll see that this is a lot smoother now and we can see that our hairs are flowing properly. And then the next thing we want to do is add some more particles to fill in our scalp. So just below the viewport display you'll see the children tab and you can head over and select interpolated. Then right away you'll see that it adds a bunch more particles to our scene. Just keep in mind that this is a big difference between the viewport and the render so I'm going to select both of these and set it to something like 50. If you do have a slower computer, you may want to set the display amount a little bit lower. Then these next settings basically just deal with the shape of our hair, so we're just going to leave them for now just because, again, we're all doing something basic. But if you do add something like a wave, just make sure to bring the amplitude quite a bit down. The hair shape more just deals with the way it'll look in the render. Then really important, if you're using any forces or any other simulations in your scene, you want to make sure to isolate the effector collection. So what I do is I just click up here and add a new collection. Then if you just leave this empty, you can always just click here and select collection 2. Now if I select back on our main collection, nothing will get added to this collection here. And I found this to be the simplest way to just isolate your simulations. If you did want to add some forces, you could add them right into this collection and it will immediately calculate them. And this could save you from having some exploding hair issues. You don't have to hit play, but I'm just going to show you where we're at so far. So if I hit play and just zoom out a bit, you'll see right away that our hair just starts falling into our character. So the next thing we need to do is add collisions. 
let's just click on our character here and we can head over to the physics properties and click here to add collisions. Let's just leave this to default for now. And then if I was to hit play, you'll see right away that we run into a couple issues. Our hair kind of pops out. As well, if I zoom in onto certain areas, you'll also see that our hair is sort of going right through our geometry. So if I just head back to frame one, the first issue we had was our hair popping at the beginning. And if I hit play, you'll see that it sort of just shoots out. So there are a couple ways we can do that. So let's just head back to frame one. And the first thing we can do is head into the particle settings and try to deal with it here. The first thing that I'm going to try to do is just change the collision distance. So I'm just going to select that and hit zero. And then if I hit play, you'll see that's already quite a bit better. It's not jumping up as much and it's looking a little bit more natural. So the most common thing that people do now is sort of go into the quality steps and try to crank these up to get a better simulation. But this doesn't always help and it will definitely slow your simulation down. So one of the reasons why I added a second geometry for the scalp is so that I could control it separately from our collision object. So what you can do is just right click on the scalp and just make sure to set the origin to the geometry so that your pivot point is here. Then if you hit S to scale and hold shift and just drag this out ever so slightly just so that it's just sitting above the other geometry, you can see here that it's barely scaled but this is going to help with our collisions. And now if I hit play, you can see that it's looking a whole lot better. And the hair is barely popping at the beginning. You'll see though right away that we've already got this other issue here where our hairs are sort of going right through our geometry. Again, like I said, you could go into the quality settings and change that, but this is going to make your simulation a lot slower. So there is another way that you can deal with that crashing through without having to change the quality, and that's by using the collision. So let's click back on our collision object and head over to the physics properties. Then you'll notice that if we go under the collision settings, it says particle and then soft body and cloth. But I've found that these settings do affect our particle system, so if I was to change the damping to 1 and the friction to something like 80, as well, something that you want to do here is increase the inner distance. So I'm going to set mine to around 0.25 and we can just leave the outer for now. And then if I hit play one more time, you can see that our hair is going to look really good now. There's no more popping and all of our hair is staying in place and there's no more crashing. Once you've gotten to this point where you've got a nice simulation and everything is working correctly, you can go in and start to add different things like a bit more quality, or you could add some more subdivisions, more particles, and you can even add some things like roughness and clumping. If you do want to have the hair falling in front of the body a little bit, then you can just head back into the collision settings. And you could change the friction to something a little bit lower. Your hair will be able to slide on your collision a little bit better. So I hope this gives you a good idea on how to get a basic hair simulation set up in Blender without too much trouble. As well, you'll notice a little bit of a seam here. So what you can do is just head back into the particle settings, head all the way down. Then just make sure to uncheck show emitter for both the viewport and the render. By the way, if you're interested in NFTs, let me know. It's been a really exciting journey so far, and I've been able to sell over six of my animations. And it's something that I think every artist who's creating original artwork should get into. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as well, if you can make a donation to support me, then head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. I'll see you soon. Bye!